Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, I trust this finds you feeling thrilled about being a servant of the Lord Jesus today, that your sins have been forgiven and the beauty of his spirit now lives within you, guiding you each day along your journey. Now we're continuing our journey through the story of the Bible and what a wonderful story this is. What an amazing gift God has given us in his word to know things that without these records, we would have no knowledge of. Now today we are in chapter five and verse one begins by saying, now this is the book of the generations of Adam. So it's going to list the lineage of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him. Now I want to point this out because the Bible seems to be telling us something that we often overlook. Notice that it says in the day that God created man, he created man in his likeness. Now this would of course mean that man is created with body, soul, and spirit. But even more, man in the day of creation was created in all the glory of God. He was a perfect reflection of the glory of God. But we know because of our story that man has fallen. Man chose to follow his own will rather than the will of God. Now male and female in verse 2 created he them and he blessed them and he called their name Adam in the day they were created. Now, as we have pointed out, and I won't spend a lot of time on it, but notice it says he called their, which is plural, their name Adam, which is singular. In the day they, plural, were created. And Adam lived 130 years, and he begat a son in his own likeness, after his image. Now, notice Adam's son was not created in the image of God. Yes, he had body, soul, and spirit, but he didn't personify the glory of God because he had been tainted by sin, the sin of his father, Adam. And so he no longer looked like God in his purest essence. He looked like his father. His natural desire was to please himself, not to please God. He had to be taught what it meant to please God. And he had to discipline himself, war against his flesh, war against his own desires. And he had to learn obedience because this was not his natural tendency. And so Adam begat a son in his own likeness after his image, and he called his name Seth. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 49, it says, We have borne the image of the earthy. So when we are born, we are not born with the image of the heavenly. We're born with the image of the earthly. But after we have been reborn or born again, we shall bear the image of the heavenly. And so Adam, when he was first created, he bore the image of the heavenly. But through his fall, he took the image and passed it on to all those to come after him of the earthy. Now the days of Adam, back to verse 4 of chapter 5 of Genesis, the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Seth lived 105 years, and he begat Enos. Now the following verses are going to, in detail, list the lineage of Seth, which of course would be the lineage of Adam. And so I'll leave you to study and read that on your own. But in verse 22, we see that there was a man who lived whose name was Enoch. He walked with God. He was faithful to God. And in verse 24, God took him. Now there's little said in our Bible from Genesis to Revelation about this man, Enoch. But there is a historical document written by Enoch, and we've done an entire study on that. So I would encourage you, if you haven't listened to it, to look that up in our playlist because it's a 50, uh, close to 50 part series. And we go verse by verse through the book of Enoch, looking for contradictions to the word of God, which we never found one. And yet we saw many references in the book of Enoch that came directly from the Bible you and I read. 
And so again, if you haven't listened to that, I would encourage you to, because you will better understand what Enoch experienced as he walked with God and the things that God revealed unto him. Now, Enoch had a son named Methuselah, who most of you know lived longer than any recorded individual, 969 years. He had a son named Lamech, and Lamech had a son named Noah. And he named him Noah in verse 29, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. And so even at his birth, there was something very special about this child Noah. For his very name is prophetical, indicating that through him, God will bring comfort. Now, as we move into chapter six, and before we get into the main story of Noah and how God used him, the first six verses mention something that the Bible really doesn't expound upon, but the book of Enoch does in and of itself. And so we begin in chapter six, it says, it came to pass through time that men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto the men of earth. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now there are those that would say that the sons of God here represent the sons of Seth. But if you continue to read, Verse four says there were giants in the earth or there were Nephilim in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God, which again, they say are the sons of Seth, came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men or Nephilim giants, which were of old men of renown. Now it makes no sense if you say that normal men had sexual intercourse with the daughters of men and from them came Nephilim. But if you see the sons of God as angels, which every time the word sons of God is used in the Bible, it indicates angels. For example, in Job chapter one and verse six, it says there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. And so we see here that the sons of God is re are represented as angels. And so if you read Genesis chapter six, verse two, saying that the sons of God or the angels saw the daughters of men that they were fair, they took them wives of all which they chose. They bear children to them in verse four and the children, the offspring of these fallen angelic beings became mighty men or giants, which were of old men of renown. And we're going to see these giants all the way through the history of the people of Israel. And that's what it means when it says there were giants in the earth in verse four in those days, the days before Noah and the days after that, or the days after Noah, the days after the flood. And so if you're feeling a little bit confused about what we're discussing, again, it's been thoroughly and clearly explained through our study in the book of Enoch. So I would strongly encourage you to listen to that series and all of this will make sense. Well, verse five says, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that man was only following the passions and the desires of his own heart. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And so it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Now, as we read in chapter three, verse 15, God has promised that one would come, a promised one that would put an end to the reign of Satan, that he would reclaim what had been stolen from the almighty and that he would restore all things to as they originally were intended. And so many assume what is taking place here is that Satan, to thwart the plan of God, knows that if he can corrupt the bloodline, the promised one will never come. And so he instigates his fallen soldiers, the legions of fallen angels who serve him, to do what was never intended, have sexual intercourse with the women of the earth, corrupting the bloodline. And so God, seeing this, repents that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And so the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. 
But of all who lived upon the earth, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because Noah was a just man. He was perfect in his generations. And Noah, like Enoch, walked with God. And so God is going to use Noah to bring about his ultimate plan, the plan of the promised one. Because Noah, even living in the midst of such corruption, remains faithful to God. God and and the relationship that Noah has with God is his number one priority. And so what this tells us, looking back on this story, that even though we live in the midst of an evil world, Nothing can affect change in our spiritual connection with God unless we ourselves allow it to. And so are we going to fold to the pressure around us, placed upon us by this world? Or will we remain faithful to the God whom we serve simply because of our love and our allegiance unto him? Well, that is a choice that each of us must make daily, friends. And no matter how many circumstances or people we attempt to blame, ultimately each of us are responsible for our own actions and our own choices. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. And I know that this story is much deeper than what I've taken the time to explain. But again, we have a 50-part series on the book of Enoch that if you listen to, all your questions will be answered. And of course, little of this information has anything to do with our daily journey with the Lord Jesus? It only tickles our intellect. The basic truth is is that God expects and demands faithfulness in our service to him. And when we are unfaithful, it causes him great sorrow. And so let us live each moment of our lives bringing him as much pleasure as we can as our God, as our King, and as our Father. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. We'll pick up the story of the flood in our next video together. Until then, may your journey be blessed. May your heart be full of adoration and praise. And may you and your character bring him all honor as you seek to serve him so faithfully each and every day. Well, I love you, friends. May he bless you deeply, and I'll see you on the next video.